it's a pleasure to tell you about Ivantis today and our hydrous microstent, which we believe has a chance to transform the MIGS landscape. So we've raised $132 million to date. We've treated over 3,200 patients across the globe, about a third of those in standalone procedures and about two-thirds in combination with cataract surgery. And all of these patients are being followed in either our multiple level one clinical trials or our large global registry. So quick background on the MIGS market. Some treatment paradigms are starting to evolve as a lot of great competitors, like the one who just spoke ahead of us, Russ, uh, has done entering this market. And so there's about 5 million patients in the US diagnosed with glaucoma. It's important to remember, 80% of these folks have mild to moderate glaucoma. So as a result, the vast majority of the patients are residing with comprehensive ophthalmologists and the referring optometrists. And what we know then is that safety is the most important thing for this population. And one of the things that's starting to evolve as more and more technologies come to market is that the conventional outflow pathway seems to be emerging as the preferred first line of MIGS defense. And this is being talked about more and more. And then once you've attempted to restore the natural outflow, it makes a lot of sense to do some of these subsequent procedures, which actually bypass the natural outflow. And so at Ivantis, we're focused primarily on the conventional flow path. And perhaps not coincidentally, if you look at the valuations of all of the great technologies and great companies on this slide, it seems that the market is agreeing that the conventional flow path will be the greatest opportunity for patients uh, and for companies. So our technology is the Hydrus Next Generation Canal-Based MIGS device. Our effort is to bring a more potent approach to Schlem's canal through our trimodal mechanism of action. So we have three modalities. The first modality is our bypass. We have a large inlet at the proximal end that allows fluid into the body of the device. Second, we dilate Schlem's canal, increasing the cross-sectional diameter by four to five times its natural size, allowing much more fluid into the natural flow path. And finally, Coverage, we span uh, 90 degrees and allow access to more collector channels. Next slide, please. This is our surgical video. One of the things the surgeons really like about delivering our device is that it's highly verifiable. They like to see the device going across the screen. You can see the device there going into Schlem's canal. One of the things we think that's important in terms of the reproducible results we've seen is that you routinely, because we're stenting such a large area of the Schlem's canal, gaining access to multiple collector channels on the other side of the canal. So there's two markets we're focused on, the phaco glaucoma market and the standalone market. Why do we believe we'll have superior outcomes within the combined procedure? Well, we ran a trial about four years ago that was essentially a surrogate for our US pivotal trial, looking at hydrus compared to cataract surgery alone in mild to moderate glaucoma. And as you see in the results on the right there, we were 80% successful at two years versus 46% for the control group. This was published in ophthalmology, and it was a highly resounding result. Um, we will, this fall at AAO, be presenting our full two-year pivotal trial results from our U.S. pivotal trial, the Horizons trial, and this has given us tremendous confidence for what we'll see in that trial. So with the Hydrus potentially on the market in 2018, what is the value proposition for the comprehensive ophthalmologist and the referring optometrist? Well, we see it as twofold. First, reliable placement, a one-and-done one stent delivery that's going to provide access to multiple collector channels each time. And then second, this market is about patient satisfaction. It's the commitment of the surgeon to deliver an optimal refractive outcome while also giving the patient the best chance to be off medications safely for the longest period of time. And we truly believe the Hydrus has the potential to fulfill that promise to the broadest range of patients. So moving over now into what we believe is the next frontier uh, in MIGS, and that's standalone uh, treatment. And I think what we understand is that the canal-based procedures, because they're safe, have the greatest opportunity to treat the broadest range of standalone, uh, of the standalone segment. So we've got several projects ongoing here that we're quite excited about. The first one here is our COMPARE study, which is the first landmark comparative effectiveness, effectiveness trial looking at two MIGS technologies in randomized controlled conditions with MIGS experts across the globe. We're collecting two-year results on this now. This is the Hydrus versus two Glaucose G1 devices. Second, on the other end of the spectrum, our summit trial was announced last week, looking at advanced glaucoma. So we've gone to the other end of the spectrum, and we're now the first MIGS device with 
two FDA pivotal trials on both ends of the disease spectrum, mild to moderate phaco, advanced refractory. And finally, we're very excited about our real world registry. We're collecting follow up on roughly 2,000 patients at 45 centers in 14 countries. We know surgeons want to know how do these devices perform in the real world. And so we have a Herculean effort going on to, to gather this data, and it's going to feed publications opportunities and podium opportunities for us for years to come to educate surgeons on this technology. So finally, in close, I, I want to emphasize what I've talked about we're very excited about. But what we're really equally excited about is that we view the Hydrus not just as a, as a current MIGS technology, but as a platform because of the size and the shape of the device. And so we're looking at a number of things. We've had an ongoing project uh, to put a 24-hour pressure sensor on the device to allow continuous uh, IOP monitoring for the practitioners, practitioners wirelessly. Um, because of the size and placement of the device in the canal and the, the robust size, we believe there's tremendous synergies with bioresorbable drug delivery, so we've initiated a project there. And finally, uh, looking beyond, we think there's some opportunities for expanded indications such as closed angle glaucoma, which is very prevalent in markets like Asia that we'd like to eventually get into. So with that, that's an update on what we're doing at Ivantis. Thank you for your time. <laughs>